Hi. Since there seems to be a bit of a renewed interest in C recently, I thought it would be helpful to show how to get started with C development on Windows. There's a lot of information available on the web, and in my opinion, it can be quite daunting to sift through all of it. Everyone has their own opinions on the best tools a programmer should use, and most of these recommendations are not necessarily geared towards ease of use. Some tools are also packed to the brim with features that, at least to me, feel like I have to study for years on end just to learn everything it has to offer uh, and to make an informed decision on whether I need a specific feature for my own project or not. So I thought I'd give it an attempt to show you the bare minimum of things needed to get started with C programming on Windows. It is by no means the one and only true way of doing things but in my opinion, it requires the least amount of steps and gives you a good starting point. So let's get started. I have repurposed my old laptop for this demonstration and have made a clean install of Windows 10. Now, if you are on Windows 11, the steps I'm going to show will be exactly the same. The first thing that is required to build a C program is a C compiler. There's a plethora of options available for us to choose from, but I would like to stick to the Microsoft C compiler. The reason for that is, it does not require any extra steps that we need to worry about, and hopefully Microsoft will make sure that their own compiler on their own platform works without any issues. However, even if we stick to the Microsoft C compiler, there is at least two different ways to install it. We could either install Visual Studio, which is Microsoft's own development editor, or we could install only the C compiler, which comes bundled into a package called build tools. Visual Studio comes bundled with a lot of extras that are not strictly speaking necessary for C development. If you are somewhat new to programming, it might also be quite intimidating due to all the features it has to offer. So for this video, I'm going to stick with the build tools package. But this package also comes with its own challenges. For example, it is not that easy to figure out which version is best suited and where to find the download to it. I'm going to show you a tool that makes this process incredibly easy. It is available available on GitHub under the URL shown on the screen. I will also post all of these links into the description of this video. This tool is called Portable Build Tools and has a graphical user interface that it can help you to install the right version of the Microsoft C compiler. It also strips out any of the unnecessary extras. You can download this tool by clicking on the latest release right here in the GitHub description. This will immediately start downloading the executable onto your system. Once you run the Portable Build Tools executable, it will fetch some data from the internet to show you all the available versions you can install at this time. The first dropdown lets you choose the Microsoft C compiler version. I'm just going to leave this to whatever was selected there by default, which is usually the latest available version. If for whatever reason you would like to install an older version though, you can absolutely do that. The next dropdown is for the Software Development Kit, SDK for short. The SDK includes all the Windows libraries you would need to develop a Windows application. I'm going to stick with the default here as well. Next is the target architecture you would like to develop for. This means the architecture you expect your final program to run on, x86-64 or ARM for example. Since I will be aiming for 64-bit Windows PCs, I'm going to select x64 here. Then you can select the architecture of your development platform as well. I will also be selecting x64 here. The text box right underneath the drop-down boxes can be ignored. This is a more or less advanced option to define a batch script that is needed to initialize the development environment for your command prompt. But since I will be using the add to environment option below, this script is not needed. Then you can select a destination folder, which is where all the build tools will be installed. Check the option to accept the license agreement and click install. The tool will now download and install everything, and once it is done, it will show you a success message box. Just click OK, close the tool, and restart your machine. A restart just makes sure that all the new environment variables are properly set up and loaded. You can probably get away with um, just logging out of your current Windows session and then logging back in, but I just went for a full restart. After the restart, we can make sure that the compiler has been properly installed by opening up the command prompt and typing cl slash help. cl is the name of the Microsoft C compiler executable. If everything worked correctly, you should see something like this on the command prompt. And that is it. 
we now have a compiler that we can use to compile C applications. The next thing you need is some kind of text editor that allows you to edit your source files. Any text editor of your choice is sufficient, uh, as long as you feel comfortable with it and it helps you to be productive. I'm going to install Sublime Text on this machine because that is the one I'm most familiar with. And with the text editor installed, we are now ready to compile our C application. Now this video is not going to be a programming tutorial and I'm not going to show you how to write a C program, but I'm going to show you how you can compile an application with the help of the command line tools. Let's say you have written your C program in this single C file and you want to compile and run it. The way you do this would be to open up a command prompt that is pointing to the same directory as the code file you are trying to compile. You then would call CL with the path to the C file you want to compile. So CL main.c in this example. And as you can see, the compiler has produced some output in the same directory, a main.obj and a main.exe file. The object file is the binary representation of our program after the compilation process, which is then later transformed into the final executable during the linking phase. Of course, the seal executable has a lot more options that we can pass into it, and I could probably make a bunch of videos about those, but I'm just going to stick to what I think are the most basic ones, and you are probably going to need. Sometimes you might have to link a library into your program because you are using some functionality that it provides. For example, you might have to link to the Windows User32 library that contains code to open a message box. Linking in CL can be done by adding a slash link argument to the end of all your other command line arguments. This simply indicates that everything that comes after it is meant for the linker process. The linker process just accepts any kind of library as an argument, similar to what the CL does with C files. So if I need to link to user32.lib, I can just type that after the slash link and it will be included into my executable. User32 is a systems library, so I do not need to specify a full path to it because CL will just look into well-known directories for it. However, if you ever have to link to a library you downloaded from somewhere, you might have to specify a relative or absolute path to it. I'm going to add a link for the compiler arguments documentation into the description of this video. Another argument to use with CL is slash Z7. This will include debug information into your executable, which will allow you to step through your code while running your application with a debugger. This option works best when paired with the slash O D argument. OD will turn off all kinds of optimizations for your program, which makes it easier to debug. However, it also makes it slow. So you should only use OD when trying to debug something. And speaking of optimizations, there is also slash O1 and slash O2. O1 will enable compiler optimizations that favor smaller executable sizes in exchange for speed, while O2 will favor maximum speed in exchange for larger executables. If neither OD or OR1 are specified, then O2 will be used by default. In Microsoft terms, an executable build with OD is what is called a debug build, while an executable build with O1 or O2 is called a release build. Typically, you would work with a debug build during development of your application, and when it is time to ship your program, you would create a release build. Though, in reality, you would probably want to work with a release build during development as well, just to make sure your application is as performant as you expected. And then only switch to a debug build if something horribly went wrong. But speaking about debuggers, it seems that we do not have one installed at the moment, and so how would we debug our application? Well, printf statements can be useful to observe the state of your program it for sure does not beat a good graphical debugger that fully visualizes the state your program is in while you can step through it line by line. And in terms of graphical debuggers, there is a few options available. WinDBG, um, X64DBG, RemedyBG, or Visual Studio. And I bet you can find a lot of pro and cons for each of those, but I'm going to show you how you can install and use the RAD Debugger by Epic Games. The RAD Debugger is currently in alpha, so it is not fully polished as other options. But in my opinion, it offers a really nice and easy user experience without any sort of bloat. Um, it quickly became my daily driver. 
even though it is in a very early stage. To download it, you can just head to the GitHub page and in the description you'll find a link to the pre-built binaries that you can download. Just download the latest zip file and extract it into the directory of your choice. The red dbg executable is the only thing you really need. You could now just start the debugger and open your executable file that you want to debug via the UI. But I would recommend to add the debugger to the environment path variable. Go to the advanced system properties, click edit environment variables, Look for a variable named path and click edit. Then you want to click new to add a new entry to the list and copy paste the path to the red debugger executable to it. Now when you open up a command prompt, you can type red dbg and it will start the debugger. To debug your project executable, you can type red dbg followed by the path to your executable relative from whichever directory the command prompt instance is currently in. So if you are in your project main directory, you can type red dbg main.exe. This will now start the debugger with your executable attached. And if you press step into or press F11 on your keyboard, it will start your executable and immediately pause execution on the first line of your code. You can then step through your code by pressing F10 or F11, set breakpoints, inspect variables, and all other sorts of things to analyze your current state of your program. To continue execution of your program until it hits the next breakpoint, or until it terminates, press F5. There's a lot more to be said about debugging and how to use the RAD debugger, but this is not a debugging tutorial. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to install and run the RAD debugger on a fresh Windows install. So, we got a compiler, we got a text editor, and we got a debugger. We are basically ready to go and create some amazing things. But there is one more thing I would like to show you to make your programming experience a tiny bit easier. No doubt you might have noticed that calling the compiler from the command prompt with all its different arguments is a bit of a chore. And this is where batch scripts can come in handy. A batch script is a Windows script file that can execute a sequence of commands for us. So we no longer have to remember or type all these CL arguments every single time we want to build our program. To create a batch script, simply create a new file and give it the .bat extension. I like to name mine build.bat and put it directly in the project folder. And now we can add some instructions to it. The first few instructions are just going to be some basic setup I like to do for every batch script that I write. I'm going to start by adding at echo off. This instructs the batch script to not output commands that are being executed to the current command prompt. If you are curious, you can later remove that line and see the difference on what it outputs. The next command is going to be set local. This has the effect that any environment variable changes only persist during the runtime of this script. Now, I'm not going to change any environment variables in this example script, but like I said, this is something I always add. Then I'm instructing the command prompt to switch its current directory to the same directory that the script is located in. So anything that gets executed within this script is always executed from the same location as the script file itself. The syntax of the CD argument is a bit peculiar, but here is a breakdown of the individual components. And that is all the setup done. Now we can call the C compiler with all of our arguments. Now if you want to build your application, you only have to type build into the command prompt and it will run the build.bat script. Of course you could do a lot more uh, things with these build scripts. This is really just the starting point of what is possible. Um, you could handle command line arguments in the build script as well that changes the type of build you would like to do. Um, for example, build release could instruct the compiler to build your application with all optimizations enabled. You can basically do whatever your project needs without having to fiddle with some development IDE and try to make it work. The benefit of these bat files compared to other kind of build scripts like make or cmake is that bat scripts 
work on any Windows system out of the box without the need for any other tools that you have to install first. It might not be the nicest or fanciest scripting language there is, but the fact that anyone with a Windows install can run them, that beats anything by far. And that is basically all you need to write C applications on Windows. I hope this overview was worthwhile and I hope it somewhat lowered the entry barrier to writing C programs on Windows 10 or 11. Let me know in the comments if you found this overview useful and I hope you are now off to write some very cool things in C. I want to thank my supporters on Ko-fi for the recent donations, you are really helping me out. And if you would like to support me as well, so I can continue to make these videos, then please head over to the URL on screen. And that is all I have to say for this video. Um, thank you very much for watching and I see you next Friday. Bye. But there is one more things. Things? <laughs> one more things? You can then step through your code. Hello. Hey. You're being very loud while I'm trying to record. And I hope it somewhat lowered the entry bar. <clears throat> bar, bar, the entry bar, the entry barrier, the entry barrier. <laughs> and now I triggered my dog again. Ah!